Do you ever wish you could have a life do-over, similar to a makeover or a house renovation? A chance to try something again with a different result? Try Again with Monique is a place where I will give you my take and also hear from you regarding the questions and challenges we all face in life. You will either be inspired to try life again, over and over again, or make some really good lemonade from those sour lemons. Either way, I got you. If at first you don't succeed, try again with Monique. I'm back. Welcome back to me. As most of you know, I have been on hiatus from the podcast due to, well, life. My father died last year and there were some pressing estate matters that needed my time and attention. And my family of five, including my three children, caught the dreaded COVID, which lasted a lot longer than I anticipated. That was not fun at all. Anywho, I needed to wait until my mind was clear again before resuming episodes. I am now ready to do so. In the last two episodes, I started a series of talks on success and I referenced future interview segments of people who will discuss personal success and their journeys. I still plan to do those interviews and hope to bring them to you during the month of August. Until then, I'll be here every week sharing with you what's in my heart, what's on my mind and my thoughts. Today, I want to talk about contentment. My father's estate and COVID really interrupted so many plans I had made over the last several weeks. When you're quarantined and sick, you have no choice but to be still and patient. It was really frustrating for me having to cancel so many plans, but life happens and sometimes it interrupts the best of plans, as you all well know. During that time, I had to learn contentment and I had to learn to appreciate simple things like health, family, rest, breath in my lungs, and to let go for the moment of everything I was trying to achieve or wanted to do. So how should you respond or, or what do you do when life interrupts your plans or just happens? I say the most helpful thing to do is to learn to be content. I think contentment is one of the keys to a happy life. As a matter of fact, the definition of contentment is the state of happiness and satisfaction. Contentment is not necessarily being happy about everything that happens to you or being satisfied with, you know, every state you're in or everything that you have because sometimes bad or undesirable things happen to us. Instead, contentment is making the best of what you have and where you are right now, and even finding whatever good you can in your present moment. You see, if you're actively looking, the grass will be greener somewhere else, guaranteed. There's always someone smarter, more talented, bigger, better, richer, and so on. You, you, you know, you, you'll live in a constant state of wanting more or wanting different if you don't learn to be content where you are, even if where you are is a temporary place. Without disciplining yourself to be content in your present state, you will never be satisfied with anything you have because your active search will inevitably find, find better. That is why I believe there's so much greed in the world and why so many affairs happen. If you're not tending to your own garden, so to speak, and always looking at someone else's, you're going to eventually find better and you're going to eventually desire what someone else has. You found it because you were looking and likely not paying attention to what you have and can do to make your life better and more fulfilling. You see, comparison kills any chance of contentment ever happening in your life. Not to mention, you may get the other person's garden and find out it is not all that it appeared to be. There's a quote, the grass will never get greener by focusing on someone else's lawn. And sometimes you might compare your lawn against someone else's without realizing that their grass isn't even real. Refocus your energy on your blessings, your goals, and your growth. So maybe the gra greener grass on the other side is fake. But even if it's real, it's, it's not your grass. And your grass could be just as green if you water it. I always say you can't act single if you're married. And you shouldn't act married if you're single. Be content in whatever state you are in. Then when your season changes for the better, move on, knowing you've made the best of the season you are coming out of. It really is the only way to enjoy life, every aspect of your life. 
Otherwise, you're in a constant state of seeking and waiting for the tide to change or for something better to come along. It is not to say, though, that you shouldn't have goals or strive for better or even learn from others who are where you want to be or have what you want to have. But it is to say that you must strike a healthy balance between seeking better or more and being content with what you currently have or where you currently are. Philippians 4.13 is a scripture that tells us to be content in all areas and seasons of our life when we have enough and when we're lacking. To go along with that scripture, there's a quote that says, contentment is an attitude that says, I will be content with what God has given me. There's another quote, beware of destination addiction. The idea that happiness is in the next place, the next job, or even with the next partner. Until you give up the idea that happiness is somewhere else, it will never be where you are. There's another quote, contentment is not the fulfillment of what you want, but the realization of what you already have. Yet another quote, content people don't always have the best of everything, but they make the best of everything. Contentment keeps the focus on your garden and your race in life while still you know, existing and sometimes competing in a world where better, more, prettier, greener is always present. You see, comparison kills because it robs you of your present and appreciation for who, what, and where you are in life. The good news is contentment kills comparison. I'm going to close with um, my favorite quote on the subject of contentment that really illustrates the overall point I'm trying to make on this topic. And that is, you won't be distracted by comparison if you are captivated by your purpose. I'm going to repeat that. You won't be distracted by comparison if you are captivated by your purpose. See, focusing on your own journey and what you contribute to the world helps you to run your race at your pace and at your level and helps you to stop comparing your journey or your life experience to others. It helps you to stop comparing your chapter one with someone else's whole book or their chapter 20. Knowing you are uniquely qualified to be on earth with a purpose to fulfill helps you to stay in your lane. That is, this is the key to finding contentment in life, which is a key and finding contentment in life is a key to finding happiness and satisfaction. I'm going to finally leave you with four takeaway words to live by. They are, learn to be content. Bye for now. Thank you for taking the time to listen to Try Again with Monique. If you enjoyed today's episode, please take a moment to leave a review wherever you are listening. Please also remember to hit the subscribe button so you can be notified when new episodes are available. New episodes will be posted weekly. Please also like and follow us on Facebook. Try Again with Monique is a production of GM Associates released under Creative Common Attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives, 4.0 international license. Remember, if at first you don't succeed, try again with Monique.